Now we come to the portion of the day where it's time to assign homework and your homework for today is going to be designing a couple of availability solutions. By now we've talked through things like failover clusters, always on availability groups, mirroring, log shipping, where you run backups, where you run CheckDB. What we're going to do is break out and let you guys pick individually which of these you want to tackle. We're going to cover a couple of different scenarios. You can solve one or both. There is no one right answer. There's lots of different ways that you could sketch out these answers. And when you're sketching stuff out, there's three things that you can consider. In solutions, there's people, process, and technology. The way that I'll say that is you can add hardware, you can change hardware. Some of these scenarios will have a budget and things that they prefer to use or things that they prefer not to use. You can also change things about the SQL Server. If you want to change isolation levels, if you want to say, you know what, we should really redesign this portion of the application or change the way that this works. You can also make changes to people. If you say, all right, now it's time for you to hire a DBA. And I'll tell you what, a little secret from doing a whole lot of these classes, whenever you tell DBAs that they can do whatever they want in a design, every DBA seems to answer that you should hire more DBAs. Every DBA goes, well, I think these people sound like they need a DBA. Those people over there, you know what they need? They need a DBA. That's not the only answer to everything that we have here. Scenario number one. Our always-on availability group is bringing us down. This particular client has something very simple. They have a two-node always-on availability group. They have one physical box with SQL Server installed. All our, This is our primary for our user databases. Then we have a second SQL Server. These both use local storage. We're not dealing with any kind of a SAN. It's a simple setup because this is a fairly small company. This is just five developers. They built an application and they've done pretty well for themselves. They chose SQL Server as a backend and they spent a lot of money initially when they went through and bought Enterprise Edition, for example, for their always on availability group. Their goal is that they don't want to lose, in the event of one server going down, they don't want to lose one more than one minute of data and they don't want to be down for more than one minute. They're actually not worried about DR at all. They don't mind being down for extended periods of time if they lose the entire data center. In the event of corruption though, they'd like to have no more than one minute of data loss and be back up and running within a minute. They don't have a DBA, so this is one of the reasons they got always on availability groups so they would automatically repair, repair corruption for them because they don't have that skill. If they have an oops delete, they're okay being down for an hour and losing up to an hour's worth of data. And that hour's worth of data is pretty luxurious. This is what lets them, they, if they want to, they can restore the whole database back up to say an hour ago before somebody did the oops. The background on this thing, it's got about 120 gigs of data. It's only in one database. The whole entire application just points to one database. There's no multi-database joins. And they spend a lot of money on this server, on these two servers. Each of these servers have two quad-core CPUs with 256 gigs of RAM each. And they went with those nice fancy pants PCI Express Fusion I.O. cards. They went with really expensive, fast, solid-state storage because they were paranoid about this thing being slow. They have always on availability groups set up with automatic failover so that it'll automatically fail over from one node to the other, but their budget money kind of ran out when it came to licensing the second instance. They've only licensed one instance. They have it licensed with the software assurance so that they can fail over back and forth. They're just not reading from the secondary, doing backups or check DB over on the secondary. They do all their workloads on the primary and it's fine. The queries are fine when they run but sometimes they don't run at all. From time to time, it'll feel like SQL Server just disappears for 30 to 60 seconds. Sometimes if they're directly connected to the SQL Server, the databases just disappear or go offline. They're not really sure why this is and they can't figure out how to troubleshoot it. They don't have a DBA and 
they're willing to spend money, but just not a lot more money. Let me go back a few slides and I'll show you the, uh, the uh, budget piece. They've invested a lot and they don't really want to spend much more. So don't go telling them go hire three DBAs to troubleshoot their AG. So your homework is three questions. First off, what do you want to leave them with? You're going to recommend a set of changes and then when you walk out the door, they need to be able to meet their RPO and RTO. Sketch out what you want to leave them with and then what are the benefits of the changes that you recommend and what are the risks? How might they go about avoiding some of those risks? Here, I say in the beginning, you can change hardware, people, or process, but here you, you can't really change a lot of the hardware. You can't really hire a whole lot more people. So there's some interesting challenges that you're going to have to overcome there. In scenario two, we have a scaled up SQL server. This team built a big ginormous monster of a server and people are pretty happy with it in terms of performance. But one day management woke up and went, hold on a second. If this SQL server goes bump in the night, we have a problem. And this is a problem for us because we'd really rather not lose data. This crew has uh, two full-time DBAs. They support, say, maybe 20 different SQL servers altogether. It's not like they're just dedicated to this one monster SQL server. And the team in the company that has this application, there's nine developers that all focus on building code that runs against the SQL server. These guys are willing to spend whatever it takes to make it right. I'm not going to say money is no object, but if you needed to spend half a million dollars, they probably wouldn't blink. In order to, what their goals are, they don't want to lose any data at all in the event of a server going offline, and they want automatic failover within one minute. If they lose a data center, they already have a secondary data center. It's just that nobody ever thought to do DR for this particular SQL server. So they have another data center that you can go and use. You don't have to go build one. They would like to, if they lose their primary data center, lose no more than one hour's worth of data and be down for no more than one day. That one day is kind of luxurious. It lets you do some manual processes there to fail over. In the event of corruption, they don't need automatic page repair. Sure, maybe it would be nice if they could get it, but they would be willing to be down for an hour and lose an hour's worth of data. And for oops deletes, they don't want to lose more than one minute of data. They don't want to be down for more than an hour. Now an hour sounds like you, you could do some luxurious time uh, work, but here's the next gotcha with this. These guys are running SQL Server 2008 R2. They're running on Enterprise Edition because they got the money for it. But eight terabytes worth of data across I'm sorry, three terabytes worth of data across eight databases. So this isn't easy as the last one where we had a small amount of data in one database. These guys have several terabytes of data spread across databases that are growing every single year. They did scale this thing up. They have four eight-core processors, for all licensed with Enterprise Edition, 768 gigs of memory, and this server just kind of slipped through the cracks. No one's been doing log backups on this thing. It was in simple recovery model, and they're just doing full backups every night. Performance is fine for them. CPU's not overloaded. They're able to cache a lot of data in memory. So no one's complaining about performance right now. So now you have three questions for this server as well. What features do you recommend for high availability and disaster recovery? Pick the feature least suitable. If you look at a feature and go, you know what? There's absolutely no reason they should be using this particular feature. And explain why it's a bad idea. And I know that I bash the always on availability groups a lot in, in some of my presentations through here, but it's, that's not a feature that I'm like, you should always say it's a bad idea. No, 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 it can be totally fine for stuff. It can be fine for this. Um, and then last, describe a high-level project plan of like, how do you want to get them from this current SQL Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition, how do you want to get them to the holy land that you sketched out there? So it's uh, 412 Eastern, 312 Central. Now's the time when you switch over and start doing this homework. When you do it, if you want personal feedback from me, send it. Send it, say, you know, I'm giving you like an hour in order to go through and do that homework. 
and after about an hour, I'll go in and look in our mailbox and go check and see if any of them came up. I'll also look in the morning. I just can't guarantee I'll be able to give you personal feedback in the morning because depending on how soon the class starts. So go knock out your homework, and I look forward to seeing what you guys sketch out. See you guys tomorrow morning.